some experience in the spine of your team. I'd have him in. I'd probably have Chris Richards starting next to him. Chris Richards has gotten a lot more minutes, getting a little bit more experience, playing against some of the best players uh, in the Premier League. And and uh, he's also he's, three three or four matches now without a without a start. Um, no, I understand that. I, I feel like um, but if that distance well. does that, grows, does that change your opinion? Heath? It no. does a little no. bit. I just wanted to point. I, I I just wanted to point out that that he's still key to our national team. He's well, just. In, in a depth chart of, of good players. What's I mean, interesting two, is two matches against United and, and stood stood out as, as a good defender. It, well, all I'm saying is it, it would be an interesting thing if we went into our first nations league game, just regardless of the opponent. And we go with Matt Turner who hasn't played in a while. <laughs> so junior Des, who I don't think has played in months and Chris Richards, who might at that point not have played for, for you know, five, six, seven games in a row. So we could have some, some rusty guys. Welcome out there, to USMNT 2008. Well, I Jimmy. get it. Just I relax, get it. You know, like this is this is what we do, baby. So We're I think in cycles. I think oh. that uh, Miles Robinson. I know he's coming back from his injury. Might be a little bit too soon for him. I could see him being on a Gold Cup roster, which would be cool. That's where he kind of had his breakout in in 2021 or 20 yeah 2021. So I'm excited to to see him get back to full health. Cameron Carter Vickers. I thought looked good in the the Scottish Cup final recently. He could be, it kind of maybe depends on what you're looking for. I'd leave Eric Palmer Brown and Aaron Long off right now. So for me, it's like, do you want to bring in Walker? Do you want to see McKenzie? I want to see McKenzie. Uh, I think he's been, he's been pretty solid for his club team recently. So Zimmerman, Richards, McKenzie, Ream, and probably Cameron Carter Vickers. So there's five there. So you probably have to leave off one. Though Austin Trusty is another one too, that I, I, at what point do we give him a shot? And, and if I'm looking if we had a sporting director or a general manager or a head coach, then maybe we can make these decisions on some of these players and kind of having a a plan for how we want to integrate them into the team. But I could see Austin Trusty being another player that could really take advantage of a Gold Cup this summer, potentially. So okay. so I'm so, kind yeah. of on the fence. I'm going to have to listen to what you guys say because you guys yeah. really influenced me and brainwash me. So, so I want to make All right. wild, wild. This, this, just another lack of accountability on that back yeah, line there. You know what I mean? Jimmy that's just crazy. Eight, eight center backs uh, to another I, camp. I, I, yeah. I said I had five. I had five. And then you but, threw Austin Trusty in there. I forgot about that. Six. Uh, okay. I got that. <laughs> okay. I think, I think it's a clear, you only could pick four in my opinion for this, for this. And so Tim Ream, without a doubt, is your one. I think Chris Richards is two. I think Cameron Carr Vickers is your three and Mark McKenzie is your four. I, I I have the same exact ones, but I added Miles Robinson as a player in camp. Not not necessarily contributing, but I think you want to get him back in, keep him in and around and near and 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 feel good. It could be a confidence builder to just be so, so, for a couple couple. I I, I I think there's a lot of value in that, but but for Trusty, when do you, he's clearly been playing well and and holding his own and proving himself. At, Thirty three at, starts. I mean, I fully agree. I, when do, I think, when do you bring him in then? When do you bring him in? I would I would I would be bringing him in for for the camp, right? yeah. just for the camp. Yeah, okay. in, I mean, it's, it, that gets us above twenty three though. If we're bringing in five or six center backs, the reality is, I mean, it gets us to twenty three. I don't think we're gonna. I think we'll call up twenty six or twenty seven or twenty eight um, in this camp to actually come into the camp. I, okay, I, well, I that's believe different. That's, we, that wasn't yeah. the that wasn't the parameters. Well, that that's knew, that's right? that's what I'm saying is like <laughs> cutting off the rules. changing the rules. Right? No, yeah. what I'm saying is cutting off. Uh, that's why it was hard for me is because you're not actually going to tell the whole story of who's going to come into camp. He, and that's he's why like I'm, a walking I'm, MLS playoff structure just yeah, continues like, to change yeah. whenever yeah. defense no, is there. When have we had 23 people in camp ever? Ever, you know, like 23 will just make for, bench, just for a I, tournament. Yeah, yeah, but no, but we don't bring them in. Yeah, exactly for for the World Cup. But that even that changed uh, beyond 23. And so my point is, is like we are well beyond the 23 world, but we're sticking to the rules. So unfortunately, Austin, you'll be in camp, but you're not in the 23. Uh, Based on on the current rules that we times are tough pill to swallow. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I did you guys say Walker? No, no. He's thirty in May. He turns thirty in May, and I think his play has. You can't say off. age because Tim Ream's thirty five. Like uh, there's there, there's a there's a big difference though in style of play between the two. Yeah. And for me, he's his level has dropped or or he plateaued, and I would like to see. Other center backs in the pool, Same. who I think who who I think have a much more upside with the ball at their feet and distribution and movement, mm -hmm. um, and not so much just winning the ball in the air, which is which is great. You need center backs to be dominant in the air, but I think our the game has evolved where center backs have to be able to build out of the back, 
you know, have, have an understanding of, of when to step up, when to drop and just, I think be a little bit more dynamic. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, real quick. I'm, I'm, my thought on that too, is that when um, John Anthony Brooks was pushed out, we struggled to have a left center back that was ready, right. Uh, to, to really step up. Chris Richards, we saw flashes of his ability to be in that position. Tim Ream took that. Before those happened, Walker Zimmerman was the guy who stepped in and was like, okay, we build everything around that because this is what we got. I now think we have the depth and the quality uh, of players to push the, the the differences between an experienced Walker Zimmerman and what uh, Richard McKenzie, Miles Robinson, CCV are going to become is, is incremental. And it's better to just work with that and go with the Tim Ream. That's kind of where uh, Tim Ream until uh, uh, further noted is, is that left center back and we can and also because of a left-footed player. We all know the uniqueness of having somebody comfortable in that position with the left foot as a left-footed player myself. I was going to say, know. that's a little um, bias coming you know, from a left-footed Char player. If, Char if one of Charlie's uh, twins is left-footed, already way ahead of the other, of the other one. <laughs> that's it's true. just the reality. More you know? opportunity for the yeah. left-sided left players. All right, let's get into central midfield then. I think that the obvious uh, McKinney, Musa, and Adams will be in there for sure. I, Malik Tillman, I thought... Has been good for Rangers. I think he's continuing to be a protagonist, driving the game, trying to make stuff happen. And and I want to see a little bit more of that. I don't know if he got maybe the the maybe he got a fair shake. I don't know, but but and didn't didn't make the team. But I'd like to see this this iteration of him now as he continues to grow in confidence. Uh, Luca De La Torre got to be in there. He just got named to La Liga Team of the Week. Just another another reason to 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 bring him into the team. I would say that uh, that might be it. I, I I think I might only bring five in central midfield. You could have other players, potentially Brendan Aronson, who I expect to get called in, could drop in. You could have a Taylor Booth. I know he's hurt right now, not playing midweek for Utrecht. Maybe they're just saving him midweek so he can be ready on the weekend. We have to wait and see. They lost but to an amateur team, by the way, which is kind of funny. They were in the semifinals of the Dutch Cup. Um, random, but we don't need to talk about that, but it's it's kind of cool. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there. And that's because Taylor didn't play. He didn't play. <laughs> yeah, and everything why. drives through him. There's there's yeah. a, a lot of cool analytics out there to, to how much the offense goes through, Utrecht's attack goes through, Taylor Booth. Yeah. So, I, you, you know, he could drop centrally too. So so I kind of just have five, guys. I, I'm You know what? I'm putting my flag in the ground. I'm saying McKinney, Musa, Adams, Tillman, and Luca De La Torre. I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to see Gio in this camp. Much to Heath's chagrin. <laughs> uh, I don't think we see Kellen Acosta or Rodan Cardoso. I don't know. I, I, I would like to see more of him. Um, admittedly, don't watch a lot of Braziliero, so I'm not keeping tabs on him as much when he's down in the Brazilian league. And uh, Georgi Mihalovic could be another option as well. But I think, I, I think we're going to keep it lean and maybe be flexible there. Charlie, you want to go. You get to be a central midfielder guy first. Um, uh, I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. I love um, it. So you, neither of you think Gio Reyna, who played in the last game of the world cup, hasn't been caught up in all this other stuff that is fam that's going on with his family is not getting called in. I don't think he's going to get I called in. I don't think so either. Mm -mm. It's, this and, is like, let's leave the family stuff out of it. He just hasn't been playing a lot. That said, we're changing kind of the scope of. But he hasn't been playing a lot for like because Jess hasn't been playing a lot, and Richards might not be playing a lot, and Matt Turner definitely hasn't been playing mm -hmm. a lot. So, so we we got to make sure that we're keeping that, I guess, fair and level. When he's clearly super talented, but but mm -hmm. I don't understand why he's not playing. It's not like the other ones. I can kind of kind of mm -hmm. see it a little yeah. bit more, but but for him, you feel like he should have broken into the team, especially when he scored three goals in three straight games. You think he's going to be kicking on, and now it seems like he's got so less. Do you, less. You, yeah, do you think something's up there? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I think there has to be something up. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to try to speculate and read between the lines. I, I, the, o the only reason with regard to geo, I said it first sporting, but I think when you start to sporting merit, but when you add in all this other stuff and I said it right from the get go, I just think there might be some time that needs to pass just to kind of work through the Burhalter Reina drama that doesn't really involve him per se. Yes. He's the center of it, but it feels more family to family there. Then, then, and then bring him back into the summer when it's just just more time has passed. I think we're going to get the results that we need against these two teams without Gio Reyna. And, and unless there's some kind of energy from, from the players themselves saying, we want Gio in, we want to bring him in, we want to support him, something of that nature, then, then of course, you want to support that as a coach. I'm curious to see what Anthony Hudson does, though. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't have 
any insight into to any of this. I, I do think that would, would you say that if you're going to bring him in, it's better to bring him in with an interim than a head coach, or is it better to wait till a head coach Good question. Comes and has to deal with that? I think the easiest way to move past it is to bring him in now um, and, and try to separate that. I, I would still think he gets uh, called in regardless of playing time or whatever. I mean, we obviously know that he's one of the top few players in the pool in terms of potential as a player um, that, I don't know. Lingering it does that help? Is it? Is it? A, is this a, just? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. I, I, you can make my point is I, I have him. I have him. I have him in in my group. I have McKinney, Adams, Musa, Luca De La Torre, and Gio Reyna. Uh <laughs>